Okay, uh, Josh, they tell me everybody knew Lonnie. Well, according to the LA Times, it says uh, everybody knew Lonnie. And I, I, was in the, <coughs> I was in the neighborhood yesterday when they caught this guy. I was just telling you that uh, all the great strides made by African Americans, they're, they're uh, catching up and surpassing white people, even in the category of serial killers. And they caught this guy who'd been 25, over 25 years he'd been at it. And uh, he looks a little like Sonny Liston in this picture. Yeah. But I was in the neighborhood um, in South Central playing with this wonderful Reverend Branch, who's joining us on our tour, uh -huh. who's a gospel preacher. Yeah, we're using this right now. You want to join? Oh, the chair. No, that's yours. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I thought you wanted to sit sit down and join us, oh, which, no, which you're welcome to, you know. Well, we got a couple guys on board right now. Okay. Thank you. We're rolling with a full crew. All right. Um, so, uh, tell me about Reverend Branch. You know Reverend? Yeah, it's, uh, does anybody really care what time it is? No, I don't. I'm, at, I'm an okay. existentialist, too. Right? Then it's, it's 11.07. Okay, thank you. I was quoting <laughs> Chicago, actually. <laughs> um, Reverend Branch is a, he's a terrific, pre uh, he's a preacher. He's got a storefront uh, church in uh, South Central. And um, Wyatt Doyle took me there because Wyatt's been, Wyatt's going to release an album of his. I'll get some of this tobacco on him. He's going to release an album of old recordings of Reverend Branch from many years ago and brand new ones. And he wanted me to play with him, and, and uh, you know, a lot of blues are, blues comes out of spirituals, spirituals came before blues. So I, I was able to, like, just play an old blues, and, and I said, now you put church words to it, and he did. And, and then they caught Lonnie down the street, uh, who everybody knew, um, right when I got there. So, uh, welcome to L.A. So, we're here in Pershing Square. This is your first time hanging out in downtown L.A.? Yeah, I've been coming here since I was a kid. Uh, and I never knew about downtown L.A. Never hardly knew it existed. I don't think the city of Los Angeles wanted you to know about it until recently. Because if I had known about Broadway here, I would have been... I, I practically like wanted to move in there yesterday. Uh, last the other night on Broadway, cruising up and down. It feels like Times Square without the sex and without the crowds. It feels like Times Square in the 1970s on Broadway. And the theaters are beautiful. Thank God they're, they're still there. I don't know if they're actively being used, but they're landmarked. All these beautiful old theaters from, I guess, from the 1920s that are waiting there to be revived, or I guess occasionally they're... Maybe I'll play one of them. Um sometime. I think Wyatt, my man Do Wyatt Doyle, my publisher here, uh, wants to do something at a, an old theater downtown. So, uh, tell me about the, the tour. You, you got to see some old friends last night, including Jane Hamilton. Well, that was a surprise. Um, Jane Hamilton, a.k.a. Veronica Hart, came. I hadn't seen her since I worked at Screw in Midnight Blue. Uh, in, in Probably in the, maybe the 1980s, I hadn't seen her. And she actually came. And there were other guys who came and said, hey, remember me? Um, man, I saw you at Molly Malone's 20 years ago, which seems like five minutes ago. I remember playing Troubadour, Molly Malone's, Genghis Khan about 15, 20 years ago. And some people came who saw me there, and like, like it was five minutes ago, and said, hey, remember? What you said? Well... Let me think now. Oh, yeah, I've been thinking about you all the time since then, too. Um, who else was there who I hadn't seen in a while? Just different journalists and uh, writers. Jeff Fiorzy came. Um, he, did, he was down in Texas. He did a film called the, the Devil and Daniel Johnson. I believe he's trying to get a film made on the story of Tiny Tim right now. I saw the LA Weekly yesterday said you're the best book writer that the... That was real sporting of them to say that. It was very nice of them. <laughs> Thank you, LA Weekly, for saying that. Has your dad read Black Cracker? Yes, he has. And what was uh, I think he loved it. Yeah. I think he loved it. Um, my mother was shocked 
and said, I can't believe this was going on. I said, you knew this was going on. You knew most of this. She said, yes, but I'm just racked with guilt and I'm, I'm in shock about this. If, if I had only known. I said, you did know. You just didn't pay attention back then. It was a different era and parents didn't worry about their kids. We were allowed to just go out for the day for five miles away and come back at, at, at dark and when we were nine years old in those days. Right now, my 10-year-old daughter has never walked down a street alone in Dallas. We live in what would look like a suburb. It's in the city of Dallas, but it looks like a suburban type neighborhood, an old suburban neighborhood. But um, you have to monitor your children 24 hours. She's never had the experience of just going out with friends as a kid on bicycles and just getting lost for hours, like I did, like we all did in, in the did. days of Leave it, leave it to Beaver. I could leave the house in the morning and come home at night, and I could just walk. Down American children morning. can't do that now. It's considered <laughs> too dangerous for good reason. Unless you're, they're in a very small town, I suppose. It can still be done, then they're all out on the block. But in a city like Dallas, um, I guess if they walk in mass to school, you know, ten kids together, they can walk to school that way. But do you really think it is so dangerous, or have we just become a much more fraidy cat society? We've become a much more fraidy cat society, and it probably is more dangerous. Um, it's not just that statistics are more accurate; it's um, there's just always going to be somebody out there that you don't want around children I suppose you know maybe we just have more TV news now well then I don't know the ultimate answer to that but I still would not allow a child out on their own you know under under teenage under 13 to just walk around or spend the day in any city and you probably have to be crazy to let your kid do that again unless it's a small town or they're with big kids what about boy versus girl is it is there any difference in your consideration if it's a 10 year old boy or it's a 10 year old girls boy? are pretty tough yeah you know my girl's a she's a girl scout she plays softball she plays soccer she does ballet but they're little kids um boy or girl um i'm amazed in my childhood, I mean, I, I was in hundreds of fights. I was beaten up. I beat up other kids. I was accosted by adults. But I was never sexually accosted when I was a kid. Um, thank God. I mean, there probably were some close encounters like that. But there were certainly, like, adult strangers who hit you, who threw rocks at you. I could out-throw them. But I remember plenty of adults having fights when I was eight years old, nine years old. Of course, there's a chapter in Black Cracker where I was lynched and survived that. So I guess is, it was that Is that chapter accurate to what happened? It's a, it is accurate. It, I was really lynched. I composited the scene from maybe a number of did it, did episodes. Did anyone actually put or, a rope around Oh, that? yes. And did you, were you just barely hanging yes, on by that, your... I swear to God, uh, I was either eight or nine years old, and uh, I was hung by the neck, but not successfully. They didn't know how to tie a proper noose, and well, my toe really was on the ground. Where they didn't want to kill me, who knows? Um, that um, really happened, and I, I suppose it wasn't like an everyday, ordinary experience, but it, but it was just par for the course, and... and Another day in my life then, because every day was <laughs> pretty, pretty harrowing. Looking back on your life, is that the closest you got to death? Probably not. No, not at all. What would you say were the closest scrapes you've had with death? Um, there were a number of times, um, certainly in my young days with drugs, when I was a teenager, what kind 14, of drugs 15. Were you using? Well, when I was, this is 1969, 70, 71, um, like everybody else that I, like like a good portion of my school, Great Neck, I mean, it was the days of hippies and drugs were 
part of the culture in a different way from today. 